<laughs> it's a deep brand skin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're gonna love that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Hope you guys had fun. Thanks. So this was a unique experience. So thank you first off to Tesla for inviting me and giving me media access because now I can tell the story with all of you guys here. And it is a pretty cool story. So the thing about this vehicle is that you can't really get a sense of the size of it just from pictures. When it pulls up and you're standing there, you realize this is a, a Hummer sized vehicle. It's massive. Whereas on stage and all the other shots of it, it was hard to kind of tell. So that was, was kind Kind of telling and really led to what the interior of the car felt like. So in the interior, it was really big, easily the biggest Tesla that I've ever been in. And I think at this point I've been in them all. And that was refreshing because definitely even in the Model X, it can feel a little cramped sometimes, especially in those back seats. But here we had three, you know, full size adult males in the back seat and it didn't feel crammed at all. Now in the front seat, we had the two and then there was the third seat right in the middle that folds up. And honestly, looking at it, it looked like it would be fine. If you were on a job site or I don't know, camping or something, using this truck for something, you could totally do that. I could see it totally working for three full-size adults fitting in that front seat along with the three full-size ones in the back. So this gives them a six-seater with only two rows, not a third row. So. Really cool, really good design, and I think a lot of people are gonna like that aspect of it. The glass roof was incredible, and this is coming from a guy that drives the Model X on a daily basis, which has that full-size kind of monorail glass roof. This one seemed just infinitely larger and more open. So I sat in the back, and that's where you can get a really good sense of what this brings and how it makes you feel almost like you're not in the cab of a vehicle, but you're just kind of out in the open air. So this was really unique and really cool. Now there is a pillar right above where the kind of angle of the the triangle roof, I don't know what to call the roof, but the triangle part of the roof is, but because of the position of it and because the windshield goes so far back, you can't really tell. It's kind of out of your, what we'd call foveal viewpoint. Now, if you look up, obviously it's there, but in general, it felt very open and spacious inside, and that was a really cool and really great job by the Tesla team. Sitting in the back looking forward, you had 
a very plain white seat back, which was an interesting choice. I'm not sure why that was. The door handle area seemed pretty standard, common to what you'd find in say a Model S or Model X. But then up front, you had this marble dash, which looked kind of bizarre. And when I asked the guy about it, he was strangely silent. <laughs> it's a deep brand skin. <laughs> oh, they're going to love that. <laughs> I think he was actually on the phone. He had an AirPod in, and as we were getting out of the car, we heard him talking to someone. So I imagine the comms team and him were kind of going back and forth about who's getting in, what's happening, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, you know, maybe you need to go charge, maybe you need to do this, whatever. Just constant communication. So I think that's what was happening there. But it was funny that Zach mentioned uh, putting a D brand skin on it because it definitely felt like that would be possible to do here and make it whatever you want. So D brand, if you're listening, What's up? Let's do this. I would love to uh, to check those out if you ever get a chance to do it. So that was kind of an odd feature, but maybe one that was kind of cool and unique. And I imagine that when they release this, they'll have a bunch of different options for you or you know, at least ways to customize it that are crazy. Another weird quirk that I noticed from the interior, but I didn't get to drive it myself, so maybe it's not a big deal, was the uh, missing top and bottom of the steering wheel where you had this very much roadster looking race car steering wheel. It did have knobs on it, just like the Model 3 knobs. So you can see they basically borrowed all those design cues and probably just the exact same parts to make that happen. But that seemed a little odd to me and I'm not sure what that would be like after driving it for a week or a month. So down the road, when I get a chance to actually have one and drive it and all that, maybe experience it, it'll be a different story. But right now it seemed a little strange to me. However, the guy driving it didn't seem to have any, you know, any problems with it or anything. So maybe it's a non-issue. Now the touchscreen was interesting because it was the Model 3 landscape layout, but it was bigger. It was 17 inches instead of uh, 15 inches. So that is good, especially in a vehicle this big, why would you need a small screen? And I granted, you know, the, it is a big screen com in comparison to a lot of other vehicles, but compared to say the Model S and Model X, it seems relatively small. So good job there. And it also had an updated operating system which I'm not sure if this is gonna be version 11, which I assume we'll see next year around the fall, which is kind of the cadence of when they release new major versions. But there's some little interesting quirks about it. And mostly what I noticed though was just a different font. So more to come on that, obviously, and maybe we'll do a deep dive into that if I can sit down and spend some time really kind of picking apart what was in there. But as of now, you know, that was kind of the, the interior layout from the front side, from what I could tell, given my vantage point. Now, when we pulled out onto the road, and he floored it, we, we, it pulled, the car was definitely going fast, but it didn't feel like the more performance style Teslas. Now, the guy did say that this wasn't the performance model, so that would be that. Obviously, there's only one in existence. Um, so I'm not sure you know, where Tesla's getting some of these other numbers from because they don't have an actual vehicle to test. At this point, it's just an estimate or a guess or maybe a target. I have no doubt that they'll be able to hit those numbers, but the acceleration in there, while it was great, for a truck, it didn't at all feel like a Model S P100D or my Model X P90D or even a Model 3 performance. So it doesn't really you know, hold up to those other ones, but we'll see what it's like once the actual performance model, the tri-motor design, comes to market. Now in the drive, he did say it had a, a low CG for center of gravity, but given that this truck is 16 inches off the ground, which is way above anything else you can buy on the market today as a standard production car. I'm not sure that I would agree with that. Maybe for a truck it is, but it definitely felt a little floaty when we were turning there. Again, when you're comparing this to say a Model S, it's just not even in the same ballpark. So compared to other trucks, yeah, this was an incredible driving feeling. But when he was kind of talking it up, I was a little bit, you know, like, okay, okay, whatever. It's not actually what you would normally experience or, or expect in a performance Tesla. But compared to another truck, this thing is gonna be an absolute monster on the road. So that's it for my first ride and my impressions of getting a test drive in this. I really can't wait to get one and see what it's like on a day-to-day -day basis. I did not order one, but I'm gonna rent one or if you guys have one and wanna let me borrow it for a week to do the impression, hit me up, let me know because I, I really wanna get my hands on it and experience it more than this little two minute test ride that I got. So that's it for now and always don't forget, when you free the data, you might follow. I'll see you guys back here in the next one. 
Now that was a unique experience and there are even more unique experiences that I like to share on Patreon. So if you wanna join the Teslanomics community and dive deeper, learn more, chat with other members on a daily basis, go to patreon.com slash and I hope to see you there.